everyone and welcome to my home studio. I don't know about you, but this last month has felt like such a long one. It's been dark and rainy here for the whole of January and I'm so looking forward to the spring. I had hoped to bring you a new video much sooner, but these past few weeks I've been a bit under the weather. I've had a cold that made me sound more frog than human, so I took the time to focus on sketching and resting. I'm on the mend now though, so I've been back in the studio and working on a new painting. Recently, I posted a question here on YouTube asking if putting your work out onto social media affected your creativity. While many of you expressed resilience, a few of you told me that it took its toll, and I must admit, it does have an impact on my creativity too. Over the years, I've sensed a hollowness creeping into my art, driven more by algorithms and performance metrics than the genuine joy of making things. I found myself shying away from drawing the things I wanted if it didn't align with social media success, which is really kind of sad. Even something as fundamental as sketching took a back seat because it didn't garner the expected numbers. Then there was the pressure to produce paintings just to show up on somebody's feed. It felt more like a chore rather than something I enjoyed. Measuring the worth of my work by the fickle numbers of social media wasn't just detrimental to my art, it hurt my soul. The joy of creation was just overshadowed by self-doubt and overthinking, often resulting in the abandonment of promising paintings, simply because I questioned their purpose. So I was just working on flattening the layers and I made some kind of mistake with it and look what happened. Ta -da! I don't know, I just think this looks kind of cool and interesting so I'm going to run with it. Where is it? There it is. So I've been working on this painting all morning but it's finally stopped raining outside so I'm going to go for a walk. When I'm stuck inside too long, I feel all blocked up and restless, like my whole body feels it. I need to go outside every day if I can. I did go out this month even when it rained the whole day, but I can't take my camera with me when it's like that because <laughs> it'll get damaged and I can't film. So now that it's dry for once, I wanted to take you somewhere interesting. I love all the rock formations and the colours here. There are so many sweeping lines and I love feeling small against these huge stones and cliffs. I like climbing up them too, but, you know, camera. <laughs> I know some of you don't have access to places like this, so I really love to share them because they inspire me so much. And I kind of like to think you're all having a mini holiday when you watch these. Maybe watching them can go some way to help you stop overthinking for a moment too. So I'll just let this play out and I'll see you back in the studio for the rest of the painting.
So how do you break free from overthinking? It's a real challenge and an ongoing journey that I'm still navigating. However, I want to share with you some of the things that have begun to reshape my creative process, making it easier to paint without letting my thoughts get in the way. This painting is actually one of the first in ages where I've created something purely for the fun of it. For my fellow overthinkers, you'll understand the significance of this shift. The process of tackling overthinking started off away from my work. I sat down with my journal and confronted the thoughts that had become barriers to painting. I wrote down all these concerns, regardless of how trivial they appeared, and this began to unravel the knots in my mind. Then I just let the thoughts sit there, giving them room to exist. By looking at your thoughts and saying, so what, you'll soon realise that the power they once had is no longer there and they'll begin to dissipate. This exercise bears some resemblance to mindfulness meditation, where you grant your thoughts the freedom to breathe without resistance. Often it's the resistance that brings discomfort rather than the thoughts themselves. Then, when I actually started making this painting, from the start my sole aim was to create for the joy it brought. The outcome didn't require some profound meaning, nor did it have to meet any external standards. It simply needed to serve its purpose of being created. Instantly, this shift in perspective lifted the burden of expectation. Though the occasional thoughts of what is this for and what does this mean attempted to creep back in, I countered them with a simple mantra. I am painting this purely for fun. With each repetition, these intrusive thoughts quietened, allowing me to immerse myself fully in painting without a busy mind. The next part of my strategy focuses more on the social media aspect. I realised that a lot of my anxiety came from scrolling through my timelines. I would lose hours to this and come away feeling like I wasn't making the right work or doing the right things. If this sounds familiar to you, then welcome to the club. I needed to achieve the balance of being able to post and interact with the people kind enough to comment on my work without getting sucked into a few hours of scrolling. So my solution to this was to use browser extensions to eliminate access to my timelines and remove the apps entirely from my phone if I can. This means that I can still post and reply to people who comment on my work, but I can't use the other functions of the platforms. Now I simply can't see what other people are doing. I still catch up with my favourite artists though, I just do it in a more controlled way that doesn't take hours of my time. It's quite scary how much brain space and time these apps take up, so I feel it's important to regain that by limiting our usage, especially if it's affecting our ability to enjoy making things. So, are these strategies a miraculous cure for overthinking? Um, no, probably not. But they've helped me a lot recently, and I hope they can help you too if you're stuck with analysis paralysis. What's strange is that even though I set out to create a painting purely for the fun of it, it did end up having a lot of meaning for me. Meaning can come just from the fact that you decided to paint today. 
Maybe you can get a bit mystical with it and say that if you decide to quiet your mind and stop overthinking things, then the universe or whatever is just speaking through you. Or maybe you're just giving yourself enough room to make what's really important to you. Whatever it is, however you want to view it, I think it's valuable that you're just making things. It doesn't matter. Before we end the video, a few of you have been asking me about tutorials and more videos on my painting process. So this seems like the perfect moment to introduce you to my Patreon page. Unlike the restrictive nature of other social media platforms, Patreon provides more of a community atmosphere where I can freely share whatever content I please without the restraints of those pesky algorithms. On my Patreon page right now, you can find all sorts of behind the scenes content from works in progress to finished paintings and a secret sketchbook. There are even comprehensive process videos showing my work from start to finish. Occasionally, I'll even offer extra goodies like brushes and texture packs just to say thank you. Over the years, I've maintained and updated my Patreon, so there's a whole bunch of archive material alongside fresh content being added as frequently as I can. So if you really want to dig deeper into my painting process, get to know me a bit better, or even just stay updated with my day to day, then please visit the Patreon link provided in the description below. It's not only a fantastic opportunity to gain some more insight into my work, but it's also a wonderful means of supporting this channel and becoming an integral part of our little community. With all that being said, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Happy creating and I'll see you next time. Bye. Did I actually just wave when I said that? Yes, I did. So you can all imagine that. <laughs> Bye.